These quotes are from uh, Sir William Osler, who was regarded in the early 20th century as the most influential physician of his time. And these quotes come from uh, his classic textbook, The Principles and Practice of Medicine. Uh, this particular edition was 1921, issued two years after his death in 1919. What he had to write, longevity is a vascular question. A man is only as old as his arteries. A man of 40 may present uh, with vessels as much degenerated as uh, they should be at age 80. The arteriosclerosis results from the bad use of good vessels. His uh, statement I consider to be very prescient. Cardiovascular disease was not to become the number one killer on the planet for another 90 years, and yet uh, Dr. Osler realized how important his was. Cardiovascular death was just not that common during his day. In fact, myocardial infarction and stroke, those words are not even present in the index of his textbook. And yet he realized how important uh, uh, normal cardiovascular performance was to uh, health. Um, I'm influenced not only by his work, but the common observation that the number of heartbeats among a broad variety of species is relatively the same. Okay. Relatively the same uh, throughout a broad range of species. In other words, a blue whale has a long lifespan and a relatively slow heart rate, and a shrew has a very high heart rate and a short lifespan. And what all these observations tell me is that there must be some moving part in the cardiovascular system which is wearing out and determining longevity. These data came out just this past September in the journal Hypertension, and they go a long way towards proving what Osler felt. Uh, a higher resting heart rate is associated with increased arterial stiffness, or to use Osler's word, arteriosclerosis, independent of AV node blocker use and, and physical activity level. So what this says is uh, your resting heart rate is going to wear out your aorta that much quicker. And the reason for that is uh, aortic elasticity is determined by the protein elastin. Here we have a photomicrograph stain for elastin molecules. And on the left, you can see the normal lamellae in a child's aorta. And on the right, you can see the cystic degeneration in the aorta of an 80-year-old. Uh, like any other material, elastin molecules are going to un undergo uh, progressive fatigue and fracture with cyclical deformation. And, uh, and that's going to result in progressive uh, aortic stiffness. Now, Dr. Osler's knowledge must have been gained from performing nearly a thousand autopsies. And if he ever performed one on a neonate, he would have noted that the neonatal aorta is very springy, very elastic. It reminds me of one of these tourniquets, rubber tourniquets used by phlebotomists. And uh, I'm sure he performed aorta, uh, autopsies on 80-year-olds and found the aorta to be no more elastic than really any other tissue in the body. Now, I think uh, probably the strongest data showing a role for aortic stiffness in aging is from progeria patients. You're probably familiar with progeria patients. They die at an average age of 13. Ninety percent of their deaths are from cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarctions, and strokes. And this is despite the fact that they have normal total cholesterol, LDL, and HDL, and C-reactive protein. And, um, but what is different about these patients is their aortas are markedly stiff. Uh, the measure clinically of aortic stiffness is uh, pulse wave velocity. And you may not have heard about this, but you will. It's widely used in uh, Europe. And in fact, uh, a number of European organizations recommend determining baseline aortic pulse wave velocity in the workup of every new hypertensive patient. And so we can see on the left side, 
this population of progeria patients with an average age of seven, and yet their aortic stiffness was that expected in a population aged 60 to 69. The uh, community of scientists studying aortic stiffness and pulse wave velocity have done an excellent job of determining baseline values for varying age groups, including age seven. And you can see the broad band at the bottom is the expected aortic pulse wave velocity in a seven-year-old, and our patients are way above that. Now, the good news is uh, these investigators administered an inhibitor of the enzyme farnesyl transferase and found a very gratifying decrease in aortic stiffness in these patients, and that's due to rejuvenation of the smooth muscle in the aorta, such that this population went from uh, expected aortic stiffness of the 60 to 69-year-old to that seen in a 40 to 49-year-old. Uh, this is exciting because I think uh, it's going to not take that long to show increased lifespan in this particular population, and uh, it's going to raise everyone's awareness of the role of aortic stiffness in disease. Now, why is aortic elasticity important? Well, it's called the Wind-Kessel effect. Basically, and you all may be familiar with this, aortic elasticity changes the pulsatile flow from the pulsatile cardiac output into continuous flow in the capillary bed. And uh, that's because a portion of cardiac output is stored in the aorta during systole and propulsed forward antegrade during diastole, such that there's continuous flow throughout the entire cardiac cycle. And importantly, you can see uh, in diastole, there's also retrograde flow normally in the elastic aorta and that's flow backwards towards the heart. And I'm going to show you why that's important in just a little while. Now, if there was a perfectly stiff aorta, there would be no flow whatsoever in diastole. And that's shown in these diagrams. On the right side is diastole. There is no flow. And uh, by conservation of mass, if cardiac, remain, cardiac output remains constant, the absence of diastolic flow is going to mandate increased peak aortic blood velocity during systole. And I'm going to show you why this increased blood velocity is bad. So in the short term, what are the consequences of decreased aortic compliance? Well, the decreased compliance is going to increase aortic impedance. Impedance is simply the measurement of resistance to flow from a pulsatile out out output. So we've got increased aortic impedance, decreased cardiac output, decreased perfusion of skeletal muscle, decreased oxygen consumption by that skeletal muscle, decreased power output by that skeletal muscle. The gazelle is going to lose a step to the cheetah and become prey. Now, what does that mean for the human who can expect to live maybe 30 or 40 years past the athletic prime? Well, the consequence of this decreased aortic stiffness is cardiovascular disease, and I'm going to show you why. 